When an artillery round is fired, few think about where it all begins. Good, get out. Each 155 millimeter shell that lands miles away starts as a 2,000 pound steel bar inside a facility in Scranton, Pennsylvania. At the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, workers forge and machine thousands of steel casings every month. The United States operates several critical ammunition production hubs, including facilities in Middletown, Iowa, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Crane, Indiana. Here in Scranton, the Army Ammunition Plant produces large caliber metal components that are shipped across the U.S. for final assembly and packing. Every day, 20-foot long steel rods arrive by truck, each weighing around 2,000 pounds. The raw material for more than 11,000 bushings every month. Robotic saws then cut each rod into foot-long billets, the foundation for every artillery casing. From here, production adapts for a wide range of calibers, typically between 4.1 and 6.1 inches. Three giant furnaces each burning at roughly 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, heat the billets to forging temperature. Protective heat shields guard the robots operating near the furnaces from the intense heat. Each billet remains inside for about an hour, soaking in the heat it needs for shaping. When the doors open, glowing red billets emerge like burning coals and roll into a darkened handling room. Robotic arms handle the billets throughout this stage, ensuring precision, speed, and safety while keeping workers out of harm's way. They move down a conveyor toward three massive presses, piercing, extruding, and drawing, that shape the metal into its final 30-inch length. The first press pierces the billet, creating the hollow center that defines the artillery casing. Then, enormous pressure strengthens and reshapes the steel to meet military-grade durability standards. A thin layer of forging lubricant coats the dies, reducing friction and extending the life of the tools. As the presses continue, each billet stretches and elongates into perfect dimensions for heavy caliber projectiles. Once shaped, billets disappear underground into a conveyor system called the subway, carrying them to the next stage. Moments later, they drop onto a gravity roller line, still glowing, to continue through the process without manual handling. The red hot parts pass through the subway to a hot inspect station, where an operator halts the line every few minutes for checks. Here, wall thickness and length are measured, 
while the steel is still at 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This inspection ensures the forging process remains precise and defect-free. Calipers, micrometers, and gauges confirm exact dimensions to the millimeter. Technicians wear heat-resistant gear to safely manage equipment operating at extreme temperatures. Next, each casing enters a controlled heat treatment process that strengthens its internal structure. Through precise heating and cooling, the steel gains hardness and resistance to wear. This step guarantees that every casing will perform reliably under battlefield conditions. Mechanical claws then lift and hang the casings along an overhead track, leaving them to cool for about four hours. The slow cooling prevents cracks and preserves structural integrity for the next steps. Quality control specialists recheck each round size, weight, and balance to meet military standards. Machining begins. Milling refines every surface, cutting precise grooves and ensuring a perfect fit. During milling, excess metal is shaved away, leaving each casing strong and dimensionally exact. Then comes the nosing stage, heating the tip of the casing until it's malleable for shaping. Hydraulic presses apply immense pressure, forming the tapered nose that ensures aerodynamic flight. Each casing is perfectly positioned to distribute force evenly and prevent structural defects. The process happens in two phases, first forming the cone shape, then compressing and refining it. High furnace temperatures soften the steel before the second press to prevent cracking during shaping. Every movement here is monitored, from pressure to temperature, to maintain perfect consistency. Controlled heat keeps the metal flexible while preserving its strength. Specialized presses apply between 500 and 1,000 tons of force to meet tight military tolerances. High strength dies withstand repeated cycles of heat and pressure without warping. Between each stage, cooling pauses keep the material stable and prevent deformation. The finished casings, like those used in M795 projectiles, are built to withstand immense launch pressures. After nosing, their blackened surfaces are left to cool before moving into final finishing. At the machining line, casings are cut to their final shape and polished to exact specifications. Computer-controlled tools maintain tolerances within thousandths of an inch for precise performance. Next, the casings move to the paint line, where protective coatings are applied to prevent corrosion. Automated sprayers cover each one evenly with polyurethane for durability and longevity. Quality checks at this stage confirm the paint thickness 
and adhesion meet military requirements. Color coding is added for easy identification based on each projectile's use and purpose. Once these steel casings leave Scranton, their journey is far from over. They're transported to specialized facilities, like the Iowa Army Ammunition Plant, where the empty shells are loaded, assembled, and packed for active service. Among the most common shells made from Scranton's casings is the M795, a 155mm high-explosive artillery round used across the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. The M795 is designed for long-range accuracy, capable of striking targets over 23 kilometers away. When fired from systems like the M777 howitzer or the self-propelled M109 Paladin, these shells deliver devastating firepower with pinpoint precision. Some casings are adapted into advanced precision-guided variants, such as the M982 Excalibur, equipped with GPS guidance for extreme accuracy and minimal collateral damage. Other shells are modified for smoke, illumination, or training purposes, supporting troops in diverse battlefield conditions. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this.